And here they are, Elijah, Moses, and what are they doing? They're talking with Jesus. They're talking with Jesus. Now we're in the story, right? You're in the story? Peter, James, and John. James and John, if, if, if I could have just encouraged them to just put a muzzle over Peter, to just get him to shut up. Shut up, Peter. Don't speak. Don't feel like just because somebody else is talking, you have to interrupt. I would love to just sneak up and hear what Jesus, Moses, and Elijah are talking about. I bet it was some really amazing stuff. This is the gospel that's associated with Peter, and instead of listening so he could let us know what's happening there, he's talking. Hmm. So Peter, not knowing what to say, said, If you don't know what to say, don't say anything. Keep your mouth shut until you know what to say. This is, this is a good exhortation for many of you today. Shut up in Jesus' name. Don't speak until you know what you're supposed to say. Some of us have just jabber, 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 and, you know, just the mouth just keeps going and going and going and we need to bring it in. Why? Because you can't speak and listen at the same time. We need to listen. We need to listen. And that's what's, what's happening here. Peter, listen. So Peter speaks, Rabbi, it's good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters. One for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. This is the, the Feast of Tabernacles. The, the custom for the Jews would, would be go out into the wilderness, build these little tabernacles, and celebrate one of the wonderful feasts of God's salvation history in their life. And so here, here he is. And Peter is thinking, he's probably saying something really cool. Lord, let's just tarry here. Let's just have some fun. We'll, we'll, we'll put up a, a temporary shelter for you, for Moses, and for Elijah. Now, do you know what Peter's doing here? He's equating Jesus at the same level of Moses and Elijah. He's seeing Jesus as just one of the boys. We got Moses, we got Elijah, and we got Jesus. And it's like, Father says, pardon me? No. We're, we're not talking about equals here. This is my son. So what's, what's the Lord do? There comes a cloud, and the cloud shows up. And it envelops them. I don't know about you, but going with my, my personal encounter in a dream where the cloud of the Lord, the last dream that I had, came and covered me, then I could, I could bear the terror of the fear of the Lord. And I experienced a measure of wholeness like I've never, ever known. Matter of fact, I, I keep going back to that and I'm praying, Lord, you know, that was so amazing, that sense of being in your presence and being completely whole, completely whole. Can I slip in there and do that again? I want, I want, to, I want to remember what that's like. And here the cloud, I think it's a, it's a very similar dynamic. The Lord provides a cloud and it covers them. And the voice speaks, this is my son whom I love. Listen to him. Hmm. Father once again affirms, there's two occasions where the voice from heaven speaks. At Jesus' baptism, the voice spoke, and this is my son whom I love, and with him I am well pleased. And now that voice was for him. This voice is for Peter, James, and John. This is my son whom I love. I don't want to put words in God's mouth. But my paraphrase would be, shut up, 
and listen to him. <laughs> Peter, be quiet. Listen to Jesus. And, and, and the sense of listening means it, it, it has a moment when it begins, but it never ends. It continues into the present and into the future. Listen to him. Continuously listen to him. Now, you're up on the, on the mountain. You've seen Jesus transfigured, his appearance dazzling. You see Moses and Elijah, and you hear this, you experience this cloud that it envelops you, and you hear this voice, and it's saying to listen. And when it lifts, the only one that's around is Jesus. Moses is gone. Elijah's gone. The only one left is Peter, James, and John, and Jesus. You're Peter, James, and John. Do you listen to Jesus differently as a result of that experience? After you've heard the Father's voice specifically tell you, listen to my son whom I love. Listen and continue to listen. Listen to him for the rest of your life. Listen to him. Hmm. Now, in Hebrew, the word for listen, and I know I've said this like 2,000 times, but it bears repeating, is the same root for the word to obey. If you truly listen to Jesus, it implies that you will obey what Jesus says. We have the same idiom with our kids. As parents, we tell our kids, pick up the toys, get ready for bed. And they don't pick up their toys and they don't get ready for bed. And we say, did you hear me? We're saying, you didn't obey me. If you heard me, you should be obeying me. There's, a, there's a, a, a connection with hearing and obeying that's inseparable. And it's even true in our language. If you listen and you hear, it implies that you will do, you will obey. Mm -hmm. So this last slide. The footnote in the Passion Translation that Brian Simmons has is just too good not to just read the whole thing to you. It's here on chapter 9 of Mark, verse 8. They saw no one with them anymore except Jesus. There were two mountains in the life of Jesus that focused on his true identity and mission. On this mountain... His face shone as bright as the sun. Yet on Mount Calvary, his face was beaten to a pulp. On this mountain, his clothing was glistening white. Yet on Mount Calvary, his clothing was taken from him and he was bleeding crimson. On this mountain, he had at his side two of the greatest men ever to live, Moses and Elijah, yet on Mount Calvary, he had at his side two murderers. On this mountain, the glory of God overshadowed him. Yet on Mount Calvary, he was alone, forsaken, in the dark. On this mountain, we hear the Father's voice of commendation. Yet on Calvary's mountain, the Father was silent. How beautiful was Jesus on both mountains. Hmm. As we prepare our hearts for communion, Paul says in Ephesians, but now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. 
In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace.